Well, hello and welcome. The world is in turmoil at the moment, but I hope you are doing okay. Today's exciting episode is me finally finishing this gorgeous vintage style dress, which ended up being a lot longer than I thought it would, but it's adorable. I love it. It's perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Perfect jacket. So last month there was the layer cake dress episode where I made, um, actually I made a bunch of different layer cake dresses and I sort of explained, you know, this is how you work out how much fabric you'll need for a layer cake dress. And then I sort of showed you how you can sort of figure out which tier, you know, which bit of fabric is in which tier and therefore how much fabric you need to buy in order to make something you know, of the same dimensions. So um, when I did that video, like in the last 10 minutes or so of that video, I actually made a dress, but I didn't show the pleating down, like how you do the pleating. And I got a few requests to show you know, the whole of the step-by-step -step process of how you pleat down between the tiers. So today I am going to use this gorgeous fabric and I am going to make a pleated vintage dress. I can show you step by step how to do pleats. Um, I got three yards, one cut is three yards and one cut is two yards, just they were remnants. So I was originally going to make a shirt out of one, the shorter bit and then a nice um, simple vintage dress out of the second, um, the three yard cut. But I have decided, because it's actually really quite thin fabric, well, not thin, but it's um, it pleats down really, really easily. So I've decided that I'm going to use the whole of the five yards in one vintage dress. So it's basically, I want it to look like this, but this one is about four yards of fabric for a small size. And the fabric I have is five yards. So if you're a medium size, like a 14 or a 16, add half a yard or a yard. And if you're a larger size, like 18, 20 or above, um, add an extra yard maybe just to be on the safe side. So I, again, I've got the two yards uh, cut and the three yard cut. And here I'm just showing you the drape of the fabric. It's not a crisp cotton. It's just, I don't know, there's something so vintage about this. And it's got that seersucker look, that sort of slightly crinkled look in the check, in the way it's woven. I love it. Anyway, so I used the two yard cut and I just used the top end of it, like half a yard to cut out the front and the back of the bodice. And I also cut out plain white um, cotton front and back. And that's going to be my lining bodice, which helps carry the weight of the skirt. And you can just see them underneath the bodice there. And then with the rest, I just sort of straightened up the ends. So uh, here we go. I just sort of you just have to make sure that the um, your cuts are straight because when they cut it at the fabric store, sometimes it's not cut at a right angle. So you just have to cut off a few bits of fabric to make sure they're perfectly straight. And then with the big section, I cut that into eight parts and with the remains of the two yard bits, so like the one and a half yards that I had left, I cut that into four sections. So that's going to be my top tier of the skirt is going to be four salvage to salvage lengths across and the bottom half of my skirt is going to be eight lengths of fabric long. So the second half, the bottom half of the skirt is going to be twice the width of the top. So effectively, instead of having the three tiers like this one, I'm just going to have two tiers, but they're slightly wider each tier. And um, yeah, so I'm going to basically have the second and third tier, not the first smaller tier. And it's just because there was a cut in the middle of the fabric, I kind of had to do it this way just so that I got the best of the fabric. But obviously, if you have a whole single cut, then you can do whatever you want. But I just felt like after I was folding it and trying to divide it into something, I just felt like this would look better. So yeah, I'm happy with this. So now what I have to do is I won't do the bodice at the moment. I think I'll start with the skirt first. So what I would do is sew these four sections together to form the a loop that I can make the first tier out of. And then I'll sew these eight sections together to make a massive loop of fabric. And that will be my second tier. So I'll sew these into two loops of fabric that will be my first thing and then I will be back. 
Okay, I changed my mind. I really love the three tiers. And after all, this is a video that's supposed to show you how to do pleating. So it makes sense that I do three tiers and show you three lots of pleating. So, oh, and this fabric that I'm using is fashion width. Normally I work with quilting width. So yeah, salvage to salvage, this is 60 inches. So if I cut off a third of it, um and just use this section here for my first tier it's still quilting width like 45 inches wide or 112 centimeters wide so what i'll do is this third over here i'll just pop it back so the second tier is now three and a third um lengths wide and the first tier um is two quilting cotton widths wide so it's 90 inches wide which is plenty absolutely plenty so that would be my first tier and it's shorter and then, then my second and third tier are longer length and yeah I'm really happy with this and you'll get to see more pleating so now I'll do the loops the two lengths of fabric for the first tier I'll make a loop the three and a third bits for the second tier I'll make into a loop and the eight sections for the last tier I'll make into a massive loop and then I will be back <laughs> this is so funny it looks like a family of ghosts this is adorable I love it okay so the one on the left is the shortest one it's just the two quilting fabric lengths um, bits tied together um, sewn together then the middle one is the second tier so that's the three and a third of the fashion width so 60 inches wide and then the f the one on the right I still don't know my left from my right how old am I anyway that one is eight full lengths of fabric so there's really going to be a lot of fabric in that last tier which is awesome I think that's so cool so now it is time to attach the tiers together so we'll pin them and then we'll mach um, pleat them down and then we'll machine sew them so I'll take the first tier and the second tier and we'll start with the smallest ones I did try to film pleating on the skirt the actual skirt but this fabric is not right it's too thin so you can't tell which is the outside and which is the inside so I'm using different fabrics this is the top tier the blue one and we'll pretend this um, holly fabric is the second tier of the skirt so what you do is um and it's got a different back so you'll be able to see what I'm doing so we'll pretend the blue one is the top and we put a pin on the left side the right side the middle front and the center back so you've got four pins on there and then with the second tier you do the same thing left side right side center front center back and then you find the center points so um, you started with four pins then you turn it to eight then you join them together all eight pins and obviously the holly layer the second tier is twice as big as the first tier the blue one so when you pin them together at those eight points then 16 points then 32 points um there's a big gap because the second tier is twice as big so what we have to do is just keep pinning them down until those loopy gap bits are small enough to make one pl one pleat so if they're still too big then halve it again and go around and halve each one so now they're at the point where if we fold this to the left then fold it back over itself it's going to make a nice pleat so they're the right size um you can measure it if you want but i think it looks better when it's done by hand so you push with each pleat you push the excess fabric so that they're smooth and you push the excess fabric to the left then you fold it back onto itself um and you pin it so yeah you can see this one isn't done yet so I've put smoothed all the fabric to the left so they're both smooth and then the excess fabrics in sort of stuck on the left there then you fold it back on itself and pin it into place then you go around the whole thing and you do that and once it's done then you machine sew and I just take one pin out at a time as I machine sew so it's a little bit slow 
And then once you've machine sewed the whole way round, I reinforce it so I machine sew it again. Then you do the same thing to attach the second tier to the third tier. And we have ourselves a skirt. So now it's time to show you the making of bodice, which I actually did a long time ago. Okay, it is finally time to do the bodice. So we have the front, the back of the outer fabric and white for the lining. This is a sleeveless bodice. So I have to use the burrito method so that I can machine sew the armholes without having to do a whole bunch of hand sewing. So I pinned the shoulder straps together for the lining and for the outer and then I machine sewed them. Then splay op lay open the um, outer bodice and put the lining bodice right sides together over the top so we're doing the neckline now so pin them together at the shoulder strap so that they're perfectly squared and then match the centers and then pin the rest of the way around and then it is time to machine sew them together just right around the neckline and obviously you have to be really careful and neat with this one it's curved so it is a little tricky but once you machine sew, then you clip the curve right around the neckline. Then you turn it out so that it's around the correct way. And now it is time to do the sleeves or the armholes. So we'll do the right side first. So you sort of splay it open. So you sort of tuck under the hole of the right side of the lining so that you've got a big flat surface for the right side to do. Then with the left side, you roll that up and keep rolling it until it sits directly between the right side outer and right side lining. So it's able to sort of fit in the strap that you're just about to sew. So then you pin the right side outer and the right side lining together. You can see here, I make sure the shoulder seams are perfectly matched on the lining and the outer first, then I do one side and then I do the other side and sort of pin them all. But it's the center seam, the that shoulder seam that has to be perfect so that the whole thing can sit nicely. Then you machine sew that and now I have to sort of just trim down this seam allowance so that when you turn it out, it will sit properly. And then you also have to clip the curve because this is the, the fabric that goes right around the arm hole. So it's going to be round. So just clip the curve really carefully, obviously. And then it is time to turn this out. So you sort of pull up, see, here is all the rolled up fabric. So you're going to have to pull basically the whole of the outer bodice back through to the front in just through this tiny little shoulder strap. So just gently and slowly we'll get it done. And here we go. So this at the right side is now done. It's a full strap, um, shoulder strap. So now it is time to do the left and you just do it the same way. So you splay open the um, you put the lining so that there's a big space to work on. Then you roll in the right side and you pin it. And I won't show you the rest, but obviously you machine sew, you um, trim down your seam allowance and then you clip the curve, then you pull it out. And here we go. So the next step is to sew the sides together and then we've got a whole bodice. So you just pin the sides like the left side together and then you pin the right side together, front and back. And once you've pinned them, so here you see one side is the left side and the outer is pinned to the outer and the lining is pinned to the lining, obviously. So they sort of meet in the underarm. And yeah, then you have to, once you've machine sewn it, you need to press it with the iron because this seam has to be laid flat open so that your underarm sits nicely. So make sure you press that seam open, then you can turn it in the correct way and then you'll have your bodice done. Oh, and on the lining, I also do a machine line at the seam allowance um, point so that I'll put, show it out, let, I'll show you why later, but it's important to do it at this point. When the bodice is still just a little bodice and it doesn't have the full heavy skirt attached because it would be a lot harder to do that straight line later. So yeah, basically it makes the last step, the hand sewing, way easier just if you have this one machine sewing line. Anyway, the bodice is done, so let's see what it looks like on the 
Oh, she's so pretty. It's so cute. I was a little worried about, you see how the red flowers are at the bottom and on the shoulders, but not sort of in the chest area. But I don't know. I, I don't mind it. If it bothers me, I'll wear a brooch. But I think I would prefer to not have a massive red flower there, if you know what I mean. I like it. Okay, now it is time to put this bodice and the skirt together. I feel like I filmed that footage so long ago and I'm finally, finally finishing the dress. So awesome. So I just, again, pleated it down, pinned the left side to the left side, the right side to the right side, then the front of the bodice to the front of the skirt, centre front of a uh, centre back to the centre back and then machine sewed them, then reinforced it, so did it twice. And now to just finish it, you just tuck the um, the raw seams up inside, then you fold down the, black, uh, the white, which is the lining, and just hand stitch that. And that way it, um, the lining supports the weight of the skirt. So if you just have a bodice and no lining, the whole weight of the entire skirt has to be carried by that bodice one more layer of fabric and your dress doesn't age well whereas if it's lined um even if it's just the bodice that is lined it just ages so much better and here we go here's the dress that skirt is just amazing so a lot of you want to see what this dress looks like without a sash and then with the sash so this is without and it's just going to be so lovely and floaty in summer. But also I just wear it with a pair of yoga pants and a long sleeve t-shirt in the cooler months. And I just wear the same outfits all year round just with a few more layers in the cooler months. And here it is with my green sash. And oh my gosh, I love this so much. As I said, I thought I was making a vintage length. But I'm so bad at measuring things. I love it this length though i absolutely love it so much it's so nice and floaty bought a lot of cotton voles and cotton lawns in the past few months well in the middle of the year really and i just finished doing all the um like i've done a few fabric hauls and that way you can watch those episodes while I'm making jackets because making jackets takes so much time. Anyway, now that I've finished this dress, all the fabrics, all the lovely floaty fla fabrics that I want to make um, shirts out of, now I want to make vintage like dresses like this out of them because this is gorgeous. It's so floaty. I love it so much. And I mean, obviously, a white dress isn't fabulous, but I do have, um, like, I just have a white underskirt underneath it if I'm wearing it in the summer months. And also, just during winter, I'll just wear yoga pants and a long sleeve t shirt underneath. So, you know, it's fine. But it's so lovely and floaty. I love this so much. And it's the green. I wasn't sure about this green sash, but it's absolutely gorgeous, this Dior green. And I've got like a million different sashes that I'll try. I think the ladybug one will look really good too. But also I've got that silver ribbon. It's sort of silver and cream. That will look gorgeous too. Anyway, there you go. I finally finished my gorgeous um, cotton vol dress with that beautiful floral vintage style print. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I love this dress so much. It's so floaty. I have to go twirl now and make some tweed jackets, obviously. Okay, thanks again for watching. Happy sewing.